the Power BI user group for Milwaukee and Chicago. Uh, this is going to be uh, Tommy Puglia going through some really fun data flows for the enterprise. So we're going to get rock and roll here in just a moment. Uh, Tommy, hello. How's it going? Long day, I guess. Yeah, it's been it's been a bit. So I mean, we've already talked how many times today? Uh, to probably too much. As as you, uh, if you have joined us this morning, uh, we spent a good hour long debate. What what was even the topic this morning, Tommy? Go. Th what was the topic? I forget already. It was deployment pipe pipelines. Oh yeah, we're doing deployment pipelines. How how much we love the deployment pipelines. Excellent. <sighs> yes, exactly, exactly. So. so Kicking off things here, Tommy, uh, I will zip it over here to your uh, Power BI user group or Power BI Chicago user group slides. So we'll do those next. Uh, it looks like you got five of those. I'll put those up now and I'll hop off. I'll do the production and I'll uh, watch the comments. Uh, just for everyone to know, we will do a happy hour at the end of this. So, uh, you know, you can go grab a drink now if you want or uh, wait till the end and grab a drink with Tommy and Mike and we'll show up at a uh, user group session afterwards. We'll hang out and uh, just talk about Power BI for a little bit after the session. So it's going to be about a lot hour long uh, video presentation. And then after that, we'll jump over to a Teams meeting and hang out and talk. Thank you all for joining. And Tommy, take it away. All right. So perfect. Hey, this is nice with Restream with uh, you can share multiple presentations. All right. So just want to go over some quick things as we normally do on our uh, wonderful Chicago user group. Welcome to the Chicago, Chicago Power BI user group. It's great to have you. I'm excited to have you here. Um, some quick announcements. We haven't met for a month and a half and some really neat things going on. So let's kind of dive in. So first thing is again, our updates and let's kind of go over. Yes, we've got the podcast. What I wanted to do is actually go over for you guys. Um, a really major feature when it comes to, and I think I need to say this one more time. All right, so why don't we do this? So the biggest thing right now is something called multiple audiences in Power BI. And if you have not seen that, it's pretty ridiculous and it's pretty incredible. So um, Mike, if you want to switch to, I'm going to remove the one that I had. And we're going to use the other slide deck here. So let's present this one. Yep, I'll pop in here. Yeah, I do really love this new feature called um, audiences in apps. So Tommy and I have been on this kick for quite a long time now around how important it is for you to publish an app and share things with people who do not need to create content, but they're going to merely consume the reports. So we have a small group of developers who are creating, building said reports. And then from those developed reports, we're then sharing out from them uh, to a, an audience of people. And so we love this feature called audiences. I think there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff across the community. A great blog article uh, put out by Data Goblins talking about in detail, you know, what are some other options or other ways you can think about these audience groups? All right, Tommy. Tommy, I think we're good. Is it the one that's called welcome? Is it the one I'm putting back up? Uh, it's the October 2022. Got it. Here we go. Putting it back up. All, All right. right. So perfect. So yeah. So and I just want to show, and you've not seen this, you need to see this. So let's kind of just go over that. Actually, that's not it. This one's it. Multiple audiences. Cool. So multiple audiences is a big one. There's been some major data marts updates for the query editor. Um, few things with metrics are favorite. And then one thing, just wanted to announce it for those who are cross-platform and Power um, Power BI, Power Apps, there's actually now um, the ability to add a report to a Power App solution. So, and I can actually go through the same process that you do with content and Power Apps, which is pretty neat. What I did want to do is I actually did want to do a demo of the uh, multiple audiences. So uh, if we can share my screen, please. So I have here a uh, new audience and you can see it's updated because in the very top, I got this little new navigation here and the content, the way to manage content is a lot easier. If I want to add content here, I could choose which reports from that workspace. Adding sections is a little easier. I can actually drag and drop. That's a neat new, what a novel idea. And what I've done here is you can actually now see these audiences. This is a cool part. 
where what we can actually do is really showcase <coughs> either have a, a audience where all the content's available but i have this other one and i called it just sales and you can actually see that i'm hiding some of the content in that workspace but not only that the other side of this and you can see this in here the other side of this is the people that can actually access it are the workspace users and certain people. And that's the really neat thing here. And it's not just sections. If I actually want to add another one here and let's call this the October demo, let's say I wanted to keep the scorecard, but I did not want to include in here, let's say the January scorecard or the pug dashboard and selectively choose those reports. And let's say here, if I have any samples that I would want to look at, don't want to add that BPA report. So once I do this, I add the people I want. Again, it can work with security groups as well. I'll update this guy. And then what does that look like for the user? So I'm logged in here with that particular root user. And what I can actually see here is that person goes into the report. Oh, let's go back and refresh one more time. It should work. Unable to navigate to destination. Well, also, don't share, don't hide the top uh, piece of content. So what you can actually see here, so let's just do this. Let's just make sure that the Chicago Pug scorecard is shown for everybody. All right. Cool. So we'll update the app. I'll refresh my report and what you can actually see for this particular person, I actually now have the audiences in the top that you can actually see. And what that does is again, it just basically makes it a lot easier to organize where if I want to actually go in, look at the scorecard that was actually working. So let's actually choose my content. I think the uh, actual demo is going to go a little better, but you can actually see I have the all chicago pug workspace i have this just sales one that hides some content and then for this october demo you can see that it's kind of really selectively choosing so when you think about sales teams in different regions um and or multiple marketing teams that manage digital b2b b2c the ability to actually have this all in one is really really neat and it's just a feature that I personally love and so happy that it's actually out. The last feature that I just wanted to quickly showcase is one of my favorites, always my favorite, but it's really the metrics visual has gone a huge upgrade. And we'll go in here and add this. And now with the metrics visual, what I can do is I can add a metric. And rather than adding the entire scorecard which is basically an embedded i can choose a metric as a visual so i can browse metrics here and we'll say you can actually say add metrics metrics as a visual and basically let's kind of log in and we'll just choose this connected scorecard here which i should have access to And let's just do this one more time. Good thing the demo is going to go a lot better than this. So let's choose this Chicago user group here. We'll just add in the URL. And then we'll say that here. That always works out, doesn't it? Well, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, right? So I guess they're working on this just a bit, maybe something with the service. But that's all right. We'll make it work. It is a neat feature. Thanks, Microsoft, for screwing on me. Luckily, my demo is full proof. So enough with the things that don't work. Let's dive in to the I love it. It's foolproof. <laughs> oh, my God. Goodness, good. me. you know, not... new features come out. They're a little bit buggy potentially. You know, the demo gods are not with you. It's not going to work with you today. It'll it, the next part. Data flows are going to be rock solid. 
Data flows are going to be a rock solid. So right, your, pre your presentation is back up, Tommy. One, yeah, one last major, major, major announcement. In next month, November 10th, we are so lucky to have Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari come to Chicago. They're going to be here in the city. So, and we're actually having a real in person Chicago user group. It's going to be local. So, if you don't live in Chicago, you're going to have to fly. That's kind of how it used to be. So I'm coming down. Cool. I'll be there. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going yeah, to yeah. drive. I'm going to train down to go see this event. This is going to be a good event. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. So this will be super fun. I'm like, super excited it's about cool. this. So, and what the, they're coming, both of them. And they also usually don't travel uh, um, together. Usually they're traveling and doing their, yes. their own thing. So the fact that they're yeah, both, very rare is they're both individuals for an AMA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's basically going to ask me anything. Uh, we'll start at six o'clock. And if you want the link, here is the meetup. Here's another thing with the meetup. A few things to know. Yes. First, there are some COVID protocols. It's the Microsoft building. Two, there's a limited number of seats available in the in the room and at the Microsoft office. So you must RSVP on meetup. And three, we're charging three dollars mainly because we want to make sure the room's full. If you pay, it's kind and of and Tommy needs some cannolis. Tommy needs some cannolis, and it's more <laughs> you're putting your money where your mouth is. You're just not going to willy nilly RSVP. I'm going to see you there. <laughs> so all that's available on the meetup site, and the event has just, as of now, is now published live. So share the word. If we get a lot of, you know, a lot of engagement from you guys, we will try to see if we get more uh, more attendees. But yeah, we have. 45 people available. We'll have dinner. We're going to do the whole thing. We will be hosting online too, right? We're going to yeah. test that out. We're going to, we're going to try to stream it live, but we, we, that if it doesn't work well, we'll at least record it and we'll post it after the fact. So you want to be there live. You want to come get your questions asked, answered by the experts. Uh, we highly recommend that you attend in person. It's going to be super fun. I'll be there. We'll see if we can drag Seth down there, kicking and screaming the whole way. Um, it should be fun. We're going to have a blast and we would love you, for you to join us. It's only $3. Right. And and the fact that we've never done a live and in person at the same time should work out great. Just like it, a quick demo. Just like a demo. No problem. <laughs> Works out good. <laughs> Solid. 100% of the time. My goodness. So, yeah. And the, just the last kind of, like I said, a few FAQs on this is just make sure you need to attend a uh, you have to RSVP on meetup. That is the number one part of this. That is if it's going to work or not, or because we're going to have to send the list to the Microsoft office um, before basically 24 hours beforehand. So just good things to know here. Um, yeah. So that's, we're so excited to have that announcement and really get going. So let's on with the show. And let's go into the data flows for the enterprise. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So, so I'm going to switch slides here for you, Tommy. Data flows for the enterprise coming on now. That's the wonderful. one you're looking for? Yep. Perfect. So Boom. as we know, a few quick things we'll go through. I think a lot of you already kind of have seen me before. But if you are new to the user group, first, welcome. And next, we'll just kind of go through. My name is Tommy Puglia. I'm a Microsoft MVP run my own little band, a uh, Power BI consulting firm, and uh, obviously lead the Chicago Power BI user group. And finally, back in person. It's been too long. So that's what it used to be back in the day. Um, another quick, awesome thing, if you can't get enough Power BI content out there, there is a podcast out there that I also do with the guy that's on here. I um, recommend it. It's good times. It's it's not bad at all. It's called and Tease Tommy in the morning, every morning at 7.30 a.m. Seems to work that way, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, today today was an especially fun one because we we focused exactly on um, yes uh, deployment pipelines, which really, you know, <clears throat> makes it fun. Um, and we talk about Very things rarely that do we, do we hang on an entire topic for the whole episode. Yeah. 
and we we again we're, we're really focusing away from the power b or what we say the power bi water cooler and that's our focus where it's you can learn how to do a lot of things but it's more focused on the why what well, is that always the best case scenario and that's really where we want to focus and where we try to focus so you can uh, find us on youtube spotify all the whole things so just a cool thing there all righty and let's kind of dive into today's kind of main thing and what we're talking about here with data flows um there is a quick link that i will it's called bitly bit dot ly that pull a poll if you guys want to go there and basically what you can will be able to do is there's a few questions that i just want to kind of gauge where you guys feel data flows are for you and we'll just kind of go from there so uh let's kind of go into the main intro here so the internet keeps skipping all right so all right is the internet that bad let's see if we can close a few things here yeah, I, I think we're okay. It just cuts out every so often. So it's so far so good. Uh, sometimes it skips a little bit and, and catches up here, but I think you're good. Just take a deep breath, slow down, and uh, I think we'll be All good right. to go. All Hang right. Hang in there, so, internet. Cool. So, and let's kind of dive into what are this idea of data flows from the enterprise? And really, let's start with the basics here on how are data flows actually used today? where a lot of times we get the idea of data flows or something that we query, we can do some dimensional modeling, we can do some basic dimensional tables, and it's worked a lot. They've been around since 2017, um, but I don't th think a lot of people have seen them as a true like, ETL tool for a long-term solution. Uh, this conversation we've had on user groups and also on our podcast where Yes, data flows are neat, but they're definitely not a long-term solution. That's what the data lakes for. That's what Azure's uh, for, data factories for. And while there is some some uh, value to that, at the same time, more and more we're living in the Power BI space. We might not have access to all the different resources, platforms, and services. Um, and data flows are automatically available to us and power bi's microsoft's making it more and more uh um easier to kind of manage everything in power bi with deployment pipelines and what they're doing with the access and uh member permissions and now data marts so really let's kind of we're going to talk about like if you're a team of users or really doing the same thing more than once and not just your dimensional tables not just a dim date table which is kind of the probably universal way to use a data flow. Um, the biggest thing that here is how can we actually speed up and optimize a lot of our complex queries that maybe use multiple reports or maybe for a singular report. So let's go into that. So if you've never heard of data flows, um, what can, just a quick primer on what they are and what the, can they do. They are basically power query on the web and that's the initial idea of it, but it's really morphed and evolved into so much more. Um, especially if you actually look on the uh, power platform, power BI roadmap for the next six months on what Microsoft's planning to release, uh, data flows are going to be more than just connecting to power BI. It's going to be actually, be able to be accessed in other uh, services in the Microsoft uh, um, platform, which is a huge feature. And also, as Mike likes to say a lot, the data flow functionality in the service and on the web is way more evolved than uh, what's on desktop. Yeah, the, the, the experience, you can tell where the Microsoft dollars have been going because you look at all the pretty edges and the new um, images and how data transformations occur. You can tell the dollars have been going into Power BI, Power Query Online. That's where the money's being spent right now. So I'm very, I love the enrichment of that. It's been getting a lot better as that experience has been maturing. And now it's becoming more of a robust tool that I think I, I can really get behind now. I'm doing some more data flows and seeing that over desktop stuff now for a little bit here to do some more experimentation and loading things from the internet and the web. The connectors are incredible. 
Red Bull right now. So it's it's really cool. I'm, I think they really rounded out the feature requirements of that that application now. Yeah, and they are like I said, they they're continuing to do more, and there's a lot more features that you probably have not heard of or maybe not tried out. That again, we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the other big part of this too is how it loads into Power BI data sets. I am personally in the opinion, and there's actually one of the the polling questions is should any should anyone who claims to be a Power BI developer understand what a data flow is and be able to create one and know the use cases. I am fully in the camp that that's an absolute yes. Uh, it's not enough just to know Power BI desktop. Data flows are the, I think that bare minimum, it's not an, even like a nice to have. This is not where you're looking for a SQL developer and nice if they can do Python too. Um, what data flows can do, and it's just speed up your process, even if you're a team of one. Uh, <clears throat> be able to basically create your queries, your transformations, and then in any Power BI report, connect to those same queries, which is not loading back from the original source. It's actually loading from the data flow itself. So you're not pulling on your existing engine. And again, all the integrations we're used to. So why should we really think about these more? And why should we consider data flows a more part of our process and our service? Um, again, you may not have a DBA team or an enterprise solution when it comes to your data lake. Another thing we've talked about too, the other side of the coin is there's rapid development and there's also rapid changes that we need to as the BI team or as a business user need to be able to adapt to. Having the knowledge of what a Power Query is allows data flows to be a huge solution. Uh, to me, a BI dependent solution on what they can do. Imagine you had all of your product categories, but no one's actually grouped that or actually has a hierarchy for that. Creating that one time in one data flow, being able to connect all your reports that probably you all use products. Um, and being able to incremental refresh from there. And that's just dimensional tables, complex calculations or main fact tables. If you begin to expand your team, data flows become a better solution. If you don't have, again, an enterprise source there. And again, this is the less load on the Power BI data sets too. Now, I am all, this is all coming from a place to understanding um, road to maximum where, where should transformations occur, should always occur close to the source. So if you can ever create your gold tables and your final structured clean tables in the source itself, obviously that's where you want to go. But honestly, a lot of times that's not really uh, always an option and for the rapid development that we do. So as we go to upgrading our data flow, so let's go to how what's the next step then um again we kind of use data flows for those dimensional tables but more and more often what we're finding out is there's, there's more complexity from the business uh we have to do a lot of transformations and there's a lot more data sources too where we know that the more data sources you're connecting to uh the less power bi is going to play nice and there's going to be the queries that you may use for other purposes where you may need maybe just the base. I just need that table, even if it's unstructured. And I'll do my transformations to that. You can do your transformations. I need to do some, but I just need access to that table because I might not have the Google API or the Google GA BigQuery access. Um, and it works with data marts. And it's a huge integration with data marts as Microsoft continues to push that. And then it, finally, again, from a performance point of view, something that's not available in desktop and something that works faster than actually Power BI desktop is something we're going to talk about with computed entities. So with all that being said, thinking about for those who are the um, solutions architects and thinking of the data lake and data factory and synapse and going, this is a terrible solution because you always have a data lake or a data warehouse. Either that or everyone's self-service. Allow. Oh. Yeah, yes, you, my... you should always have a data lake. Yeah. You yes. said data lake, and I said, oh, I should show it for this part of the conversation. So I'm you should definitely I'm here. Yes, you should have a data lake. <laughs> Sorry, right. if possible. I'll, I'll stop interrupting you now, yeah. Tommy. So allow me then 
to then propose something that I would like to call the data pond. You may not have the access to the data lake and you may not have the cost, but you can still implement a solution that is highly effective for BI teams, individuals, or even a larger uh, uh, mix of business users, self-service, and a centralized BI team. And that's what we're gonna call the data pond. Trademarked. So a few, things, a, quick, a few quick things on what the data pond is, is this is also coming from Microsoft's best practice too on their, they have really, I would love to have more updates and notifications when Microsoft um, updates a major part of the learn.microsoft site, but they constantly go through and create all these sectionals or all these feature sets of best practices around data flows and um, multiple articles that are really in depth that one of them has been around, again, uh, what data flows are and what we can do with them. So let me make sure I add that link here. So you can actually check out the documentation for yourself. We'll put that in the chat. So there's a huge resource of information on what data flows can do in today's world. And honestly, a lot of this is pretty recent. So the data pond, and this concept now is utilizing that same ECL process you may be uh, accustomed to in a data lake where you have the bronze, silver, gold, or your staging, your transformation, and your production data sets. And it makes it really easy to go in here to kind of, and yes, James, I realized I did not put a six in here, so we're going to just move on. So on my poll, Forgot six, but that's okay. Um, but going through and also understanding the business needs and what queries are being used. If you're integrating uh, the scanner API and seeing are people constantly trying to connect to Google Analytics, maybe there's a solution here where we can give more access in different ways. There's huge performance benefits with the data pond concept for complex queries. And again, we're going to talk about what compute entities and linked entities are in Power BI uh, data flows. And again, we want to push self-service too, and that's something that's really not possible when we're dealing with an enterprise solution. There's a chain of command. So this data pond that lives just in Power BI you can really utilize hearing what people are trying to do, what they're trying to transform, and then upgrade that to something that's part of the BI solution. And it syncs with the, it does sync with the, the data lake and Gen 2, where you can actually have the models in there, showcase the models. And again, this is something that Microsoft's pushing in their roadmap when it comes to being able to connect to the output of a data flow in more than just Power BI. So they're continually looking towards the future, which I completely agree with. Oh, and so just a few quick uh, concepts here that we're gonna look through and you're gonna see some icons here. So main ones that we wanna talk about here are the computed entities and linked entities. So we're all accustomed in Power BI Desktop. If I have a query and I reference it, I'm still going to pull from the original data source if I'm doing multiple transformations. Well, what these two entity types are in data flows is having our really starting staging data flow, which is really just connecting to the sources and doing no transformations. If you actually create a data flow in the same workspace, so let's say I had a data flow that had all my SQL tables, but I did no transformations and I created another data flow in that same workspace and connected to that staging, the, all those entities, all those tables. Well, what you can actually do when it comes to uh, computed entities is, again, some really uh, powerful things where it's actually going to um, uh, perform a lot faster. And that's where it's going to what's called linked entities. And that's when you're going to see that little 
the, the linking icon. And what this is, it's referencing a table from another data flow, and but it's not duplicating it. And not only that, but it's not, if I connect to a data flow, and again, we'll do the demo, and I reference a, a table from another data flow in the same workspace, what I can actually do is um, it's basically a, so to speak, live connection. I'm not loading the data into this other data flow. And what's really neat about linked entities is anytime you're staging data flow, the source refreshes, it's automatically going to do the calculation in uh, the linked entity. And this all goes into something that's called the uh, enhanced computed engine. That's something you can set on your data flow settings. But what the enhanced computed engine is, is with those linked workspaces and doing uh, computations with the computed entities, it basically really transforms the speed of transformations that you normally would do. And again, we can do the uh, incremental refresh in our data flows as well. So the structure of a data pond, we're going to have what's called our data flow, our development workspace. And this is going to be really for staging transformations. And Mike, it might make a little more sense now where I was coming from with some of this with the deployment pipelines conversation. But uh, for staging transformations, it's a, workflow, a, a workspace that's purely dedicated just for where we're going to stage simple tables, simple loads, and then do the complex calculations so we can allow to do that linked entity structure. The other part of this is... Uh, I think I think our, it's an important point that you're making here. Oh, you cut, you're there? Uh, go ahead, yeah. It's the little video's yeah. a little delayed from where you're at. Yeah, okay. So uh, I think this is a really important conver conversation here around like the staging and then and then the the gold and you see a lot of there's a, an article that was just recently put out by microsoft talking about this bronze silver and gold sets of data which i think is very important here and this is a pattern that you're seeing in the industry across many other other transformation etl platforms as well so i think this is a really solid technique here and this is what Microsoft's recommending to do, and it works and you know, it's, it's been around for a while but what microsoft's really done is really try to fit what the workspaces structure can do with data flows and with that um, bronze, silver, gold. And this staging transformation idea works seamlessly in Power BI. So when we have our development workspace, the first thing is Microsoft calls this staging. We could call it bronze. We'll keep the universal language here. And uh, really just talking about this is minimal transformations. We're not digesting a lot of, uh, we're not doing a lot of transformations. We're not doing a lot of group buys. We keep it as simple as possible here. The other part here is data sources are in different data flows. Um, so hold on one sec, because I think apparently I'm lagging quite a bit. Um, so We'll see if I already have a bunch of stuff closed. While you actually, fix that, so Tommy, anyway. I'm going to jump in and answer yeah. a question from someone on the chat. So turn, shut down your teams. It looks like your computer's lagging a little bit between the video and the audio. So shut that stuff down. Uh, and a question here from the people on the chat, and I'll just turn off your presentation just briefly while we go back up here. And a question from Kevin Arnold says, uh, should you use the Power BI pipelines to deploy a data flow? I really like deployment pipelines, and we talked about that today on the podcast. So you definitely can include a data flow inside a pipeline to deploy that through different workspaces. So I guess the question is, should you uh, versus can you? I think you should, uh, especially if you're building data flows where you're looking at multiple audiences and you're going to uh, build this kind of certified data set or this certified information across your your company so i definitely think that would be a good idea there uh, another question from i think i'm gonna get the name right here Naeem, uh what's the best practice for data flows and workspaces should there be a dedicated workspace just for data flows this is a good question um i think this depends on how your team likes to develop um it's a little bit more management and overhead if you're going to produce data tables uh with the data flows you may what I think a, a logical breakpoint here would be is the data flow, the data set as a combined workspace, and potentially the reports 
in a separate workspace. Um, so that might be something you want to consider there. But I don't think I would break apart the data sets and the data flows apart. Instead, I would use both of those uh, together in the same workspace or deployment pipeline workspaces if you're doing a whole production pipeline of data set and things. All right, Tommy, it looks like your video is back up. Want to keep cruising? Let's do it. All right. Uh, back onto the Dataflow Enterprises PowerPoint. I got Perfect. it here. Let me pull it back up. All right, we're good to go. Keep on crooking, trucking. So we talked about our staging data flows again. One of the things uh, with gateways and data sources that you want to be a little weary of is if you have on-premise sources and cloud sources, you're going to separate them into different data flows uh, because doing transformations on those and also this is part of my problem with the cloud still, where uh, some of the source connections, technically some of the connections, you can have a gateway connection. And you can also have it personally for that particular workspace. So where where you can get some really into trouble is mixing and matching there. So having different staging bronze data flows for your different sources. I may have one for SQL that's using my gateway, uh, you know, gateway to refresh. And I may have one for SharePoint and my APIs. This staging da uh, data flow or these data flows really then go into what's next. And this is the silver one in the same workspace in that development workspace. Uh, you can connect to those bronze tables and this is where we reference and then really do our complex uh, transformations here. And we can connect the data sources together We can, because now we're not actually technically connected to that source. Everything's already been loaded in to, with the bronze data flow. Um, and we can now utilize that linked entities and really use that, what Microsoft has with computed engines. It's important to know with uh, the and computed engine and linked entities, that is a premium only feature, PPU included. So just want to make sure that's at least mentioned as well, um, because it is a significant um, uh, value in processing that Microsoft's doing. So once we're able to do our transformations, we basically have those pr primed to go into a our production workspaces, and that's where our gold data flows are going to go. They are going to live in a different workspace, and they uh, our gold data flow is basically what users who are creating reports are going to connect to. That's what they're going to see. And this is where we can organize into, uh, if we have our sales, our marketing workspaces, that's where these data flows go. So again, the load, the transformation is the final, and we're, we're gonna hear that a bit today The for the bronze, silver, and gold. So just an idea of how it'll all work together is with our development workspace, a few things to keep in mind. Who has access to that um, workspace? Because again, this is purely meant for our development. And you may actually just have a workspace uh, or workspaces in your organization for data flows um, or data sets as well. And that's part of the conversation today with our data marts or our, our deployment pipelines. And then really what are you bringing into that particular uh, uh, data flow? What sources are you bringing in? That development workspace, and again, can have multiple bronze data flows, which are staging, and again, our base tables, and, um, and really where we can set up the incremental refresh at least. And what we can do from here is, again, depending on the needs, because there's a lot of use cases now. There's a lot of flexibility we have where we either can have all of that coming to one silver uh, data flow, we're going to do all of our transformations or those bronze data flows again, serve a purpose just so we actually have access to the unstructured data where other teams or users may need it in different capacities. According to the Microsoft implementation uh, planning document guide, which is right underneath the uh, Power BI Power BI adoption roadmap really talks about the same thing. And this is really focused on right in the middle where we have our uh, staging data flows, our transformation uh, data flows, all working in the single development workspace that go into that um, final data uh, workspace where we're actually pr pr producing things. And from a user point of view, you may have a lot of, uh, of your silver and your gold and a lot of things going on. 
users are never going to know that because all they're doing is connecting to what's ever in gold because that's all they have access to. So enough chat. Let's do a demo. And I'm going to go now to my screen here. And let's kind of just dive into some things we can do. So I'm here in a testing uh, workspace. And you can see I have a few data flows going on right now. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, again, create a simple data flow. And one of them is going to be for SharePoint. The other is going to be for SQL. So let's add some tables. And I'm actually using some very unstructured data sources here where it's coming from, what is it? The uh, worldwide uh, Van Arstel, worldwide importers. And I'm going to just going to quickly bring this in here. And you can actually see there's a lot of different things going on with these tables here. We'll just pull this in. For example, if you ever done dash one a day, you know there's all the different countries that are in different CSV files. You know that there's very unstructured data sets here, so we'll let this connect and go. And other things too, we have our sales CSV table. Some of the information here is, I think, from 1996 or 2011. That's no good. Uh, our manufacturer sheet. A lot to be desired here because it looks terrible. So there's a lot of transformations that need to go, uh, that need to be occur in here. And trying to do this all in just one data flow where you connect to SharePoint and then you try to do all those updates, cause that's when you, things really slow down from a data flow point of view. And I actually mm -hmm. have this timed in another data flow and we'll actually do a comparison. All I've done here is just do some very basic things. I've really just, uh, you know, imported these files. I've changed the types, promoted headers, uh, just the very, very basic things. Other things that I would do if I had time is I would probably rename these where the query names uh, for each query started with a uh, BR or BZE or something that kind of distinguishes it's a bronze data flow. But I just do the basic cleaning here, but nothing too fancy. So we'll save and close this. And at the same time, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be pulling in. Again, we'll let that load. We'll let that go. And I and feel like this new yeah. validating query screen here is a welcome scene here around the C. One of the things I had problems with the original data flows was I never told you what it was doing. I never knew what it was working on. I just kind of said like it was sitting there doing stuff. This is a very nice screen. It's waiting, completing. I, like I, I feel like it's much more. Yeah, this is a, it's a very satisfying to see all the checks as go. So they, they did a good job on the UI on this one. I really enjoy this one. Yeah, it, it, it is one of the things. I have it in data marts too. And again, one of those things that you wish that Power BI desktop would have and rather than... Um, what it is has not changed in seven years, which is still kind of incredible. So as this starts loading, the next thing I need to do is, um, again, I that's everything on the cloud. And I have a SQL database that I also have a lot of tables that I need to combine in here. And I think what we're doing, Northwind, so it's another sample one. From a naming point of view, we'll just call this Bronze, your point, October. And let's set that to refresh. So I have that data flow that's going, it's refreshing. And next thing I do, I create another data flow for SQL. Pretty simple. Still some old data here that um, I think the Northwind hasn't been updated since like 1996. So there's some transformations that I need to do here. And I, I wanted to find a way to try to combine two completely different data sets where you had Northwind and you had the uh, worldwide importers. And again, what we'll do here, I have the connection to um, the gateway. We'll connect. Let's do that again. 
Uh, let's pause this. Let's try that one more time. Uh, just so we know it's working. Here's how it's supposed to look. For whatever reason, it works here. It doesn't work in the other one, but that's all right. So you see here I have all this uh, data coming from a completely different data center. I wanted to figure out a way to, again, to try to combine this. But again, minimal transformations here coming from a database. Like, What can I do to actually... Uh, figure out a way to again combine this all together. So now I have my Northwind da uh, bronze data flow, which is really just SQL, and I have that C um, SharePoint that's again very convoluted. So really, my next part here is once they both refresh, uh, really what I want to do is I'm going to create a basically my now silver data flow. And we'll go to add table. And now, rather than just that copy and paste, what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to choose the second option, this linked tables from other data flows. And we're going to add the linked tables here. And basically the PBI data flows, we click next. And now we're going to go from in the same workspace. And that's the real important part here. So we'll do dev testing, the new SharePoint October that we just created. And we'll choose our Northwind. If you are connecting a lot of different data sources, yeah, so we'll, then we'll do our categories here. Let's just choose one at a time. That's probably the best way. So let's choose first everything in our SharePoint. We'll connect to that. Quick thing to do again, always a good idea is our grouping. So we'll say this is our bronze. Man. So that's where we know where our SharePoint is. Let's get data. Still using the legacy one, we'll connect, actually. Let's go back, because we actually want to choose Power Platform, Data Flows. We'll choose the SQL now. And now we will load that all in. Now, there's a difference here. And when it comes to, they still have the legacy Power BI data flows and now the new ones where, just notice the navigation here. I recommend whatever way you go, keep it consistent. This is just a weird, notice on the right-hand side, we have navigation one, two, three, four. And even if I looked at the advanced editor, it's choosing that I said workspaces, it has different column names, column types. But when I went to the same workspace in a different data flow, I think it was a little different here. No, but this all legacy. So the other version is the Power BI legacy version, which has a source and navigation. Just keep it consistent. And especially as you go into deployment pipelines and parameters. So let's call this bronze Northwind. So now what I'm going to do is I have everything loaded in here. And again, the important part to hear is this icon that's telling me it's a linked entity. I cannot edit this table by itself. And you can see here, linked tables cannot be modified. And this is part of that secret sauce because, 
again, when I need to make transformations, I don't have to load into this data flow everything from the previous one. It's not doing a complete load and then another complete load. It's a really more or less that direct connection. So what we actually want to do is I am going to create another folder here and we're going to call this silver. And what we're actually going to do here is just some quick items when it comes to appending some of our uh, uh, information. So let's say our staging information. So we'll call actually we'll call this staging. And I'm going to add a new query. Now, I already took the liberty of connecting everything. But let's say we already had everything connected here. And now you'll notice, so basically what this is doing, it's connecting to a bronze data flow that's not, re, um, that's not hidden. And this is important too, because when we don't load it, it doesn't become linked. And we want that, if we are doing these complex transformations, we want that uh, electric bolt showcased. So that's just a really important feature to know here. So, and you can see here, letting me know, that this is a computer ent entity, and I'm going to call this staging sales CSV. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm appending. This is like the basic Van Arstel where I'm getting the Australia, Germany, Mexico, Canada, combining that and doing some transformations. What I also want to do is let's connect to here. And let's add another one here. I have a lot of product information and I wanted to see, I like the product categorization in Northwind more than, or in the uh, VentureWorks more than I liked in the other one. So I was like, can I create a way? And let's see if I wanted to do Let's just make sure we got this right. This product master that's coming from Van, um, from Van Arstel, but there's another one that actually has bike information, which I love. Uh, the other one, this all season stuff doesn't really do it for me. So problem was the other table only has like 300 rows, which kind of makes it a little frustrating. So I wanted again to figure out a way to kind of combine everything together. So what we were able to do, here, perfect. So I got my sales information here and then I wanna bring in all of my order information from the other database. Now, you'll notice here, if I actually, this is really just connected to the product sheet. It's uh, connected to product sheet here and it has that computed entity icon. If I were to and disable the load here, it's no longer a computed entity. And, the snow, and that's another important part to know when in terms of um, when we're really working on a lot, uh, some fast queries at this point. It loses that linked entity value and it's no longer a computed entity. So I enable the load. I now have that direct, direct connection here. So We'll just do a few quick other ones here and we'll kind of really look at the last part of uh, what we're doing here just to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'll make sure we got this. So let's make sure we got all this here. So as I finally begin to load this all in, and we'll just do a few more in here. And we'll 
Let's get this last few in here where we're doing a lot of merges, a lot of groupings. We finally got it. And the last bit I'm doing here is I'm combining everything from that CSV file that takes forever to load and my SQL data. I'm also changing the dates on all of these where everything is basically, if it's from 1996, I'm updating it so it's all the last three years. Now we're combining everything from the sales CSV files from SharePoint. I'm also going to combine in here everything from uh, um, everything from order details as well. And now we're going to see actually what happens now the magic here. So let's load this all in. And again, I have the names of the ones that I know I'm going to push to my new database here. We'll save and close. And again, don't worry about all those other ones being loaded. They're linked entities. They're not going to be refreshing the other data source again. That's important to note. All the tables in the bronze folders are not being refreshed. So this is a different thinking than when we're on desktop whenever it's um, you know disable load on ones that we don't need. So as we'll go into this, there are a lot of tables in here, but again, when it comes to actually processing, it's doing bare minimum. So let's call this silver, silver uh, Yankees, because also the Yankees will be playing in a bit in the playoffs. So we'll save this. We'll let this refresh. But here's the fun part now. So I'm going to actually refresh this share the bronze table. And I want you to note if you can uh, notice what occurs. I'm going to refresh this. And as this refreshes, it's automatically doing the calculations in the new, in the silver data flow. In terms of processing, this is absolutely insane because the only refresh load that we're really doing is just to load the data in now. As the data is getting refreshed, simply just loading the data in, not doing those transformations in the silver data flow. Uh, the silver data flow is doing all the computations and that's that enhanced compute engine where it's doing all the transformations for me. This also saves a lot of time too. So anytime now that the dependent, the bronze dependent data flows refresh, it's going to update the data in the silver data flow. But it's again, from a processing uh, speed, is incredible, but also from, I don't have to set all these multiple refreshes and uh, um, errors. So I can see how long this usually takes, usually in about a minute and 35. And I do the same with the event RSTL. We have basically the same idea of the transformations, but I do it all in one data flow. And that sucker usually takes anywhere from 20 to 35 minutes to um, transform. That's combining it, custom functions, changing the dates. But because I'm not doing those transformations in the SharePoint uh, folder, because again, that's what that previous solution was, I'm just loading the data in. Now I'm actually getting all everything that really refreshed once here. So we'll let that keep going. Usually the first time that you have that connection it takes uh, sometimes a bit longer, but now I'm going to go to my other workspace here. Hey, hey Tommy, now you yeah, now that you've got now that you've got things linked together, Tommy, can can you show the uh, in this one instead of using the view here as you have it listed as the view, can you change it to the uh, the view to the uh, uh, lineage? Yes, here we go. I think this is really cool. Are you are yeah. you talking on this part, Tommy, or no? This is exactly it, and you can see that this is refreshing, Excellent. but on the silver data flow, that's really just calculating. But it's not. There's not. You would yeah. think when you see two things with two items in any other use case, two data flows are refreshing from the same source. It's 
duplicating the refreshes. They're independent of one another. That is not the case here. Like I said, I can refresh. A couple the things SQL. I found here as well. Yeah, a yeah. couple things I found here as well is if you refresh the upstream and data flows like the bronze uh, SharePoint October uh, relationship, the data flow pipeline is smart enough to know to refresh the downstream yep. artifacts automatically. Exactly. So if you look at, you know, silver October go Yankees, which, okay, whatever, that's a bad name, but whatever. Um, you can see that bronze see, yep. Northwinds yep. SharePoint October those things will automatically refresh downstream. And so it'll put the downstream data flows in like a state of refreshing, but the upstream data flows, you'll see the, the, the spinny wheel occur. And then as that finishes, it'll then finish the pipelines or all the, the subsequent data flows downstream to recalculate those entities as it goes. So it is exactly. self-aware and it is aware of the relationships and what's required because Tommy just hit bronze SQL Northwind. And now you can see the silver Chicago October is also automatically refreshing by him clicking the upstream data set refresh, which I think is exactly. really cool. Exactly. And so, and that's part of that data lake where I can do all the transformations. So again, that took with SharePoint and SQL now doing com combining those data sources together, appending merges, date changes, uh, the refresh history, 10 seconds. It's just the link source. That's all the computation I needed to do because it had already had the data in. When it comes to the my actual van, like again, come just doing that in the one data flow where I'm connecting to the SharePoint or to SQL and then doing those transformations in the same data flow. Obviously, you know that's when things start to get a little wonky and your browser can bug out. So just in terms of a single solution, I know we're right near time. So the last thing I just want to show is how this all comes together. I'm gonna uh, I'm in my final gold data flow. So I'm gonna production workspace here. I'm gonna create a data flow here. And again, from the user point of view to make it easy as easy as possible for them. We're gonna link from other tables, but again, we're choosing a different workspace now. We're not uh, we're not going from uh, one data flow in the same workspace. So at this point, I do need to set two scheduled refreshes. I need a scheduled refresh on my bronze data flows and a scheduled refresh on my production data flow because they will not, they don't necessarily um, talk to each other in the same way. So we'll say uh, our dev testing. Let's choose this go Yankees. And then again, from a naming point of view, that's where I like to put the anything that starts with that, the silver here. I think we add in here as well. It may not show, um, we've got the staging CSV sales. So let's just load a few of these in here. I think we have the product master, cool. So all we're gonna just do is transform data. There is no linked entity here. Um, because, well, there's a linked entity, but it's not going to do the compute en um, entity because it's in a different workspace. We'll save and close. I don't need to do anything here, super quick. And we call this what we normally would, and we'll call this our product uh, sales. Again, it's coming from a different data flow. So then from a user point of view, where we keep our gold data flows is the most important. We'll see here, I believe I have. Ah, I think Power BI created that in the, there we go, product sales data flow. Now, when I connect to Power BI, when I connect to data flows, going back to the trusty, uh, uh, oh, nope, nope. My trusty desktop, which is the Chicago Pug, the product data flows. And how fast this is, is because all the transformations already been done. All the loadings already been done. All I have to do is apply changes. It's basically more or less like connecting to like static tables, just with a lot of records. And like I said, that is really the data pawn in a nutshell. We didn't even go into incremental re refresh. We didn't go into deployment pipelines. Uh, we're going to revisit this when you can then push this out to other places. But... This is an incredible thing that Microsoft's really been developing more and more. 
So we'll go back to the slides and kind of go from there. Yeah, so that is really, in a nutshell, the idea of what we can do with our data flows, taking it to the next level. Again, when we don't have the solution automatically for us with a data lake, or if we need to upgrade things in a quicker way. Um, there's a lot more here, but just that framework of our gold, silver, and our, our bronze, silver, gold in a Power BI solution. If you have PPU, something you can begin to work on now from a speed, from uh, an enhancement and from, honestly, just from organization point of view, uh, this is something that truly be looking into. And yes, PPU. So yeah, that is the November or the October Power BI user group. Thank you guys so much. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn and uh, we will see you either on the podcast or we'll see you in November downtown. Sounds good. Well, Tommy, great presentation. Sounded really good. Uh, I hope everyone got some value out of working with data flows, what you can do with them. The whole linked entities element here is pretty dang sweet. Uh, I've done some extensive work around these things. And, you know, again, this is, you know, what's really happening behind the scenes here is this, these data flows are creating these CSV files and lifting them down to a lake somewhere for you to use. So it makes it a lot of, lift a lot of load away from your main servers, your backend and your data systems and gives you a place to really do some rich transformation. So really cool stuff. Loved. Um, with that, we are about time for the Power BI happy hour. So what we'll do now yep. is we're going to tr transition away from the presentation. Thank you everyone for attending. Everyone here on live stream on all the channels, you're more than welcome to join us. We're going to open up a team message here. So Tommy, if you don't mind, go ahead and share your link for the Teams meeting. Do you have a bit.ly for that one by chance or a short yep. link? Uh... I'll have a bit.ly in a second. Okay. While Tommy yeah, gets so, the link yep. prepared here, I'll hear a bit more while Tommy gives me the link. We'll put that in the session here for you. And then you can join the Teams meeting. Uh, it will not be recorded. We're going to hang out and talk about Power BI things. So if you want to spend a couple of time with us, go get a drink, come back and hang out in the uh, the Teams environment. And we'll hang so on here is until now Tommy figures out how, how to work a computer. It's there here, we go. It's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. We got it. Big. We got it. I'll put on For those of you who are me. looking for the link, there is from Tommy. So you can click that link there, and that will bring you right there from the chat window. I'm going to pull it up all just so I've got it here additionally. Everyone, thank you very much for joining. We appreciate your time. Hope you got some value. If you like this session, please make sure you like share it. We would really appreciate that. Uh, it helps us get the word out there about sessions and things that we're doing. We'll see you shortly. Uh, and I'll get the link message over here to LinkedIn as well. Cheers, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.